This week, I go full wide at Brands Hatch Indy. I see if an Atenza can outdrag a Veyron at Monza. And I absolutely send it on a Subaru at Red Bull Ring. Hello everyone and welcome to week 16 of the Gran Turismo weekly race guide here in 2022. It's week 16 and in the background we're going a little bit touring car-esque because we are in front wheel drive Scirocco's and we're at Brands Hatch Indy. Very much BTCC like in terms of the fact that you know, British touring cars are front wheel drive but we're in road cars, not necessarily race cars. Oh, you can make them look like race cars now which is a brilliant stuff. I'm going to stop waffling, let's have a look at the race details. We're racing 10 laps here at Brands Hatch Indy. It's a grid start. I mean, on Comfort Soft tyres, Bop is fixed, and it's times one fuel and tyres. Now, Comfort Soft tyres, you're going to have to go buy these. The car comes with Sports Hard as default, so a set of tyres you will have to buy. Kind of interesting that they've changed that. I actually think they've forgotten to change the tyre, if I'm perfectly honest, but even so, this is what we're racing with. In the background, you will see some timestamps, so if you want to avoid race A, jump to race B, or race C, Please feel free to do that. Let's jump to this first race and let's have a look exactly what happened because, oh my word, the start. We are full wide. We are then at the start. And a shout out to TCR Letepster. TCR, if you want to join TCR, please check out the description. Right, traction control on one for this. Front wheel drive, of course, and brand hatch. You genuinely always need traction control here because of the way the cars move like they did there. Change gear then, drop it down in to zero in traction control wise and off we go into turn one now you're about to witness what everybody fails at including myself here turn one very sketchy in this car apparently i left off completely fortunately that person had already gone off i did look behind me there we go just to check uh, and there was no contact noise i checked the replay as well and we were fine but look at this into druids the uh, two three wide ish here so i'm thinking right okay where can i go here how can i gain any positions here so down in towards graham hill and they go on the inside there, just the Germans. I think, okay, I'll try and do the old uh, cut back here. And I get on the inside and we're four wide, four wide. And I couldn't actually get on the circuit. I finally get back on. I sort of lift off a little bit here because I can see what's coming here. Uh, but fortunately, we still gain another position. We've got the German on our right who taps the French driver up ahead, taps him again. And we go around the outside here and we're about to have overtaken nearly every single person in that group. In fact, we have done an up into P5 just like that. My word. That was pretty nice driving, if I do say so myself. Fortunately, the TCR driver with a five-second penalty. Another one with, a, I think that was three seconds. And then another driver as well with a penalty here. Mondo, as we head into towards turn one. And I kind of guessed it would break a little bit late here because they hadn't gone into the corner at this speed before. So they have to guess. Uh, you know, you pick your brake marker. But if you've been slowed down, that's what happens. So P2 all the same. And we're looking at P1, who goes very deep into Druids. And down the inside we go. And it uh, looks like we're going to get this done as well. So they go a little bit too wide here. And we continue on out that corner. So we're in P1 by lap three. Like, this has never happened before. We're not even halfway through the race. And we are in P1. I mean, for the win. So, so I'm going to give you a lap guide now because it doesn't change at all. So going into turn one, you're breaking quite early here. The two board or the green spec on the barrier, use either of those. You want to brake early because you just want the car to roll a little bit. So fourth gear, and you notice I'm just trying to slow the car down. 70 miles an hour is your goal in terms of apex speed. Then accelerate through the corner. It should be fine as you head up to Druids then. On the left-hand side, we have the painted orange barrier on the left. Use that as your marker. Brake just before this in reality if you're struggling with the braking distances. But I'm going to brake smack bang on it here. And third gear, do not drop to second because you'll just get power understeer. So third gear, you even get that in third gear, to be honest, as we hit the exit of the corner. Three we go down towards Graham Hill then. On the right-hand side, we've got the green spec on the tyre barrier or the one board, whichever one you want to use. Again, you're braking early in this car. Remember, we're on comfort softs. This isn't what the car comes with. This is a less grippier tyre than the car comes with. So you have to brake early. Use all the exits, stay in fourth gear, and you should be fine. 60 miles an hour for that corner as well. As you approach this left, you are going to actually have the lift here, which is why we have a marker, which is a bit weird for this corner. Um, so where the one or the green barrier is, you just want to lift off here. Occasionally, you might want to dab the brake here. This time, I'm just trying to roll through the corner, balance the car as best I can. Use a little bit of the kerb on the right-hand side. And then you're going to straight line the brake in a little bit here. So you can either use the squared patch of kerb that I've highlighted at the bottom or the end of the kerb at the top there of that highlighted area. 
He's out of those. So I rolled a little bit. I'm breaking, breaking, breaking. Just trying to slow the car slowly down and then stay on the inside. Foot to the floor. Open up your steering so you don't hit the rev limiter and accelerate through the corner. That is how you do Brands Hatch Indy as we advance to the final lap then and head towards that line with a nine and a half. I think this is our most dominant victory ever in a weekly race guide. Someone may be able to confirm this or not, but that was domination, I would say. Happy days. I love that stuff. Now, this race will have a lot of carnage in it. The gaps were all over the place, so do be careful of this race. However, you can occasionally have a good race here, I'm sure, because you saw some good racing there uh, in this first one. That's it for race A then. Let's head to race B. Welcome to Monza then for race B. And we are in group four, as you can tell with the Atenza in the background. However, it's not the only car that you can use here, I believe. And I'll talk about that shortly. Let's jump straight to those race details then. We're racing five laps here at Monza. It's a rolling start, but... Monza, no need to worry about that. Racing hard tyres, times two fuel, times five tyre wear, and bot is fixed. Now, that fuel and tyre wear seems to be the standard now for race B, which is an interesting choice. I'm not sure why they've done that, but hey, there it is. That's what we've got. Let's roll with it. Now, I say there's two cars you can use here. So I'm in the Atenza, and a shout out to Shelty for the livery. It's the same livery we used last time. It's a brilliant livery. I will start looking out for some more liveries as well to chuck on the cars and give you shout outs, of course. However, the Bugatti Veyron seems to be still quite good here. I didn't own the car, so I didn't buy it. Um, however, Veyron may be your second choice if you want to pick a different car to the Tenza because that's what we used last week. That's it in terms of the details for race B. Let's jump to the race then and let's find out if we actually had full-on memes here at Monza. We are then at the start. So you can see a couple of Veyrons in here. We've got the Tenzas as well. There's an M4, but I wouldn't pick the M4 personally. As we get ready to race then. So it's like P9. A lot of people did not qualify. Got our driver of the week previous there. Back in P11. Dav 1969. Uh, but let's get ready then in our TCR Atenza for the Monza start. Now I've noticed a bit of a difference with the countdown. I don't know if uh, I've only just noticed it now. But three seems to still start on the TV camera. Hopefully that doesn't bug at any point. Right here we go then. As you say. Or as I said. No need to worry. Start finish straight is massive. Warm your tyres up. Remember. Tyre wear means tyre temp. Which is why race A turn 1 is a bit sketchy. Let's put it that way. So we're going to head towards the chicane. For the first time of 5 here. In towards the braking zone. I broke around 130 metres ish. And I had to just judge the braking accordingly. Because I can't give you a marker for that. Just because you start in different places. Now Dodo there. Just leaves enough. Basically an intense size gap there. Um, after a little bit of a mistake. And we take that. The M4 is a bit squirrely on power. Um, so we took full advantage in this all-wheel drive Potenza. As we head towards turn two then. Uh, we're going to be looking to see if any carnage happens in the distance. In towards the braking zone we go. We've got lots of side-by-sides going on there. We clip the left. Ooh, ooh, we go over that a lot on the right. And this is why I'm showing it. Penalty. Be careful of track limit penalties. In fact, Storaf up ahead gets two seconds there. Um, so do be careful about cutting the chicanes. I'd avoid it. Maybe cut a tiny bit, but don't, like, I mean, literally no more than half a car. Because that's when you will get a penalty. Oh, a little bit of contact there between Levers and Staraf. We get on the inside of Levers then. Getting the slipstream of Staraf as we head towards the Scari. Now, Staraf said hello in the chat. So hello to you as well. More people did as well, but we'll talk about them a little bit later on. Uh, but Staraf goes to the left side and lets off. I mean, you didn't have to do that, mate. But uh, thank you for doing that. So up into the curse position straight off the bat. Lap one. How about that, folks? So we've got two Veyrons up ahead of Zyra and Inferno. But we've got to take this penalty first, unfortunately, as we go off there. Oh, Zyra gets a half second penalty. That's for an Ascari cut, but we're going to take that penalty. And nobody really catches up to us here. Um, so everyone must have had penalties. So we're going to advance to lap three then. We catch back up to the Veyron. We've got an M4 in the middle. And the M4 is in a Bugatti sandwich here. Quite a nice sandwich, actually, wouldn't it? Um, as we head towards the second Lesmo, then in towards the right hand, I clip that curb. Through we go. And the Veyron showing its speed here. Look at that speed. It is fast in a straight line, which is why it's probably the car of choice here, potentially. Um, so maybe look in buying the Veyron as it goes down the inside of the M4, which is definitely not the car you want to use here. And the Veyron clean past before Ascari then. The M4 trying to look around the outside. Not going to quite work out here, I don't believe. Uh, and we're going to have to slope a little bit then through the middle of Ascari, heading towards the exit, then click that curb on the left-hand side. And we've got No Man's Island up ahead then. Right, what can we do here? So we're about to see the difference between the Atenza and the M4. The M4 a bit slower than the Atenza, and we're going to get down the inside then. And I realized I didn't have radar on, so in we go to the Parabolica. 
Hit the curb. Nice and easy. And job done there. Up into P5. That curse definitely gone now with the win from race A. And now in race B. Looking good. Right, lap guide time. So 150 meters board. You're actually braking just after this, actually, in the Atenza. The Atenza is so good on the brakes. You're braking after the 150 meter board. But it's just after. So just keep that in mind as we then head in towards the right. Don't cut too much. Try and click the left and then accelerate and straighten up your steering as quick as possible with the Atenza. Otherwise, it likes to oversteer a little bit. Now, Zyra gets a penalty there for cutting. And we're going to be behind the Veyron then through the Curva Grande. And uh, are we going to go for the move then? Because we are pulling in. So, you know, the Atenza is not slow by any imagination. Uh, the Veyron's just a little bit quicker as we head towards the chicane then. What you're looking for on the right side is the painted orange barrier. Basically, it's the end of the barrier just after the 150 meter board. Um, it's a really good mark here. Brake. And I'm not going to be able to demonstrate too well here at the corner because we're going to be having a fight. But the whole point of this guide is to give you brake markers and then you to try it out. And the Veyron does it very well there. Um, so going to keep the position for now is Zyra. And in fact, I'd argue Zyra is probably my driver of the week this week. It was Les Mel 1. It's a 50 meter board. I can't use shadows anymore because we have transition time transitions and different weathers. So uh, yeah, it's a 50 meter board at the moment. I know I sometimes use a tree on the right hand side, but I couldn't really see it with the shadows. So 50 meter is my only marker at the moment. Zyra there, clean racing there. It's good stuff. As we head to Les Mel 2, it's my usual marker. You can use the 50 meter board or use the tree on the right hand side. The tree closer to the track. Um, I don't think it's the last tree anymore, but you can, it's very obvious as we come into here. We clip the curb, accelerate through the corner. Now, I'm going to show you now why Zyra is driver of the week here. So they want the hazards on there, but look at this. They go for some bumper drafting instead. I didn't really want to go for this move anyway, but the bumper drafting worked out massively here. Zyra racing very, very, very well in towards Ascari, uh, where our braking marker should be where the painted orange barrier is. We back out a little bit here because I, I was expecting carnage. But Zyra broke just before Inferno did. And really, really, really good driving. Look at it. Beautiful stuff. Absolute shout out to you, Zyra. As we go through this right-hander then, we're going to clip the sausage. And then cut a little bit of left. Three we go. Stable as you like as we continue on then. So we get a run on Zyra. Zyra goes to the right. Again, awesome sportsmanship there from Zyra. My driver of the week this week. A shout out to you. Uh, as we then have Inferno in P3 up ahead. So the final brake marker you are going to need is for Parabolica. It's after the 100 meter board. It's about 80 meters in reality, but use the 100 meter board as it leaves your screen, start to brake and you'll start to get a bit more uh, greedy with the braking. Now there's another marker here and I always point this out, which is this second lamp post on the right hand side. That's your acceleration marker. At this point, you should be turning towards the corner and not understeering. And at that point, you can accelerate and you will make the corner guaranteed. Um, I lifted a little bit there. I have no idea why I lifted because I was easily making that corner. But uh, yes, do that and you will be absolutely fine. Now we're going to get into a race with Inferno. Shout out to Inferno. Inferno said hello as well in the lobby. Uh, and you can see how good the Veyron is in a straight line because we, while we're catching, we're not catching very quickly the Veyron. It really, it does pump out that speed. As we head towards the first corner, then just after the 150 meter board, we break. I release the brake a bit more because I'm going around the outside at this point. Inferno gives me space as well. Beautiful side by side action there with Inferno. We'll leave that corner in P3 then with Inferno behind, but he's in the Veyron. It's a very quick car, so we're going to have to think about what to do here as we head through the Curva Grande. And Inferno is going to start looking in that slipstream. So you're going to start seeing that Veyron coming towards me now. There you go. You can see it. Just. The attempts are hitting that wall of air. So the Veyron goes towards the right hand side here. We hit the brakes. Releases the brakes a little bit here. This is a good attempt at a move here. Trying to keep on that, that outside. I have to leave space on the inside because Inferno was just there. Brilliant, brilliant racing with Inferno as well. But it doesn't quite get the position. And we finish on the podium again. That's two for two at the moment. Two podiums in a row. My word, what could happen in race A? Before we go there, I just want to get, uh, say again, a huge shout out there to Azzy or Zyra there, my driver of the week this week and Inferno as well. It's good racing with you. You can have some good races here. It's just a guarantee. Monza, you can always have some good racing and carnage, but good racing, hopefully. Let's jump to race C then, where we're hoping for podium number three. Welcome to the Red Bull ring then for race C and we are in group three machinery as you can tell with my RCZ in the background. I'll explain the car choice in a minute. Let's jump straight to the race details then. We're racing 12 laps here at Red Bull ring. It's a rolling start. Do be careful towards the back. Although there are only 16 cars this week, not 20. Racing hard tires, times, few, uh, times two fuel, times 10 tire wear and bot is fixed. Now, I went with the RCZ because guess what? I won a trophy with the RCZ here at a live event. So I was always going to pick the RCZ, especially as it's a strong car at the moment. If it was a power only, 
And the RCZ was rubbish, then I wouldn't pick it. But in this situation, it was a guarantee. Now, a shout out to Heinz, to TTR underscore Heinz 04, I should say. Uh, a part of TTR, of course. Check out the description if you want to join the team. For delivery, it's a beautiful livery. Thank you so much. Now, there's a number of cars you can use here with this one. And we'll talk about them in the race. So let's jump to that now. Let's have a look exactly what happens, as well as a lap guide as well. We are then at the start. So you can see Subaru on pole, RCZ. We've got a Z4 in there as well. We've got an F-Type. There's some interesting choices here. Uh, but I, as you already know, I chose the RCZ with that lovely livery from Heinz. Means, beans, Heinz. Right. Anyway, if you don't know that, don't worry about it. We're going to get ready with a race. We've got wind. We've got Womble. Check out Womble on YouTube uh, as we head on to the start finish straight. And here we go. So only a couple of cars starting on the corner in the grand scheme of it. But they fixed the grid size in terms for this race. Why couldn't they have done the rolling start? I don't know. Seems very odd to me as we head towards turn one then. Oh, we got a crash up ahead. We've got a finish driver off. We've got, oh, a Brit. That scrap that's gone around here. R4M involved and a German as well. Uh, German getting five second penalty there. So deemed at fault. Now, I was a bit unsure what to do here because I was like, do I go three wide? It's very, very risky to do that. I went on the radar, backed out of this entirely. Wind then goes down my left-hand side. I stop it here. Fine. And then uh, wind gives uh, somebody a bumper draft. I think they maybe gave both cars a bumper draft there. But uh, hey, we continue on through. And there was somebody off to my left. Oh, that was R4M. Such speed. Wow. There, the finish driver. So we're on the inside of them as we head down towards this right-hander for the first time of 12. And I did wonder whether I was going to absolutely slam into the side of the German there. But no, I did know where to break, fortunately. And I was right with my thinking. I did panic a little bit. Don't get me wrong. So in towards the left we go. And the German there is just struggling a little bit in the Subaru. Now, the Subaru could be the car of choice here, actually. And I'll show you and explain that later on as they just run wide here. Wind in the McLaren behind here. I have to slow down a little bit more. Slight tap on the rear through the left-hander we go in towards... The right, be careful of this curve. The curve glitch still does exist. Um, instead of like spinning you out rapidly, it just bounces you up and down now, uh, which causes the car to spin anyway. We advance a bit further on. Wind had a penalty, and we're racing Mike now in another RCZ. So we've got close here. We're looking down the inside of Mike. This would be a lunge and a half to do. You can't really lunge into this corner either. Uh, well, you can't do it very easily anyway and make it clean. Um, so, yeah, we're still behind Mike at the moment. In towards his second one we go. Just outbreaks themselves just a little bit here. We stay tight. Get the better run out the corner. Mike struggling on power on the exit. And um, we've got a good run here on Mike. Down the inside we go then. Looking for that P7 position. And looking for Bill and Brian there. The marshals on the left-hand side. I'll talk about the lap guide a little bit later on. But P7 it is for now. In towards the last corner we go. Clip the right-hand side. And we have a Jaguar F-Type of Welshie 15 up in the distance. Well, it was in the distance until we merged the clip. Uh, in towards the left we go then. So me and Wind are going to trade faster slaps throughout this race as well. Oh, well, she getting all sorts wrong. Well caught, though. Very well caught indeed as we look down the inside of the Jaguar in towards the braking zone. We go now. Jaguar was just ahead. I couldn't really come across there because I would pit maneuver. I could let off maybe, but I just thought I'd, I'd keep my nose there just in case I got the position. Unfortunately, I did. And while she racing clean as you like there, gave me a bit of space as well. So a shout out to you, well, she. Right, we advance a bit further on. We're going to go into a lap guide here as we follow the Subaru, and I'll explain why in a second. So, turn one. What are we looking for? Yes. We are looking for that 100-meter board that we always look for at the Red Bull Ring. It is one of your best friends here at this circuit. If you jump on the circuit at any point, just go 100-meter board everywhere, and then adjust accordingly from there. Now, the Subaru goes a little bit slow through there, so I have to really lift off here. Um, but through that corner, avoid the sausage on the inside. If you hit the sausage, your car will go flying in an MR car especially. And in the RCZ, Wynn said his car was all over the place with the curbs as well. Just be careful with the sausages in MR cars. Turn two then. Again, you're trying to get as close to the 100 meter board as possible. I'm a bit further back here just because I had slipstream. I know I had a slower exit off the corner, but that speed was still caught up very quickly um, as we then hit the braking zone. Now, I go in first gear. I wasn't sure whether to do first or second gear here. So if you are in the RCZ, have a bit of a play with it and see what you find best. So we'll leave that corner. We're going to head down towards this. It's quite a difficult braking zone, this, because if you even if you outbreak yourself by a meter, it amplifies because it's downhill. But again, you're trying to get as close to the 100 meter board as possible in the RCZ. In other cars, it'll be a bit further back, of course, just because this RCZ is so good. It's so, so good on the brakes, uh, as you're seeing here um, as we get into towards this right hander. And we just have to slow up a little bit here. Now, Muscafi just slow on the exit a little bit. So we're looking, but not quite working here. You've probably seen why you should pick the Subaru at the moment. Uh, but now we're looking for the 50 meter board. Again, it's not on the 50 meter board. I found if I broke on the 50 meter board, I was going way too deep. 
So just break out a little bit earlier. Talk about 60 meters, 65, 70 meters, uh, and just roll the car through the corner. Keep it tight if you can. You want to clip the curb if at all possible. Don't use too much of the exit. And as we hit the second left here, as the short circuit meets the full circuit, that is your brake marker here, and I've highlighted there for you. So this Subaru is very good at accelerating, and it can stay ahead of an RCZ throughout the entire race. It's also going to be a bit better over the curbs as well. So that Subaru could be the car of choice here. I didn't own it, so I didn't pick it, but it's a good shout if you want to use a different car to the RCZ. Now, for the second to last corner here, Bill and Brian on the left-hand side are very good markers. They're in orange. They can't be wiped out. They're there all day. Use them as a brake marker. Uh, very nice. Now, fourth gear for this corner, not third gear that I'm demonstrating here. It's fourth gear. And then at the end of the Austria flag on the left-hand side, you're then going to brake and go to third gear. Now, it's not as it leaves the screen. It's just use that as a marker, as a reference. You're braking before that actually leaves your screen there. Clip the right-hand side. That sausage, the last corner, is absolutely fine. Now, Moscovy just went a bit slow again through that corner. But you're seeing, again, the power of that Subaru. It's doing very well here to pull away from the RCZ. So I'm going to have to pull in behind. I actually lift off a little bit here and brake a little bit early because I want the run on the Subaru. I don't want to be slowed up like I did last time on the previous lap. So I just let off. I dabbed the brake a little bit, created that gap, and then we had the run. However, the Subaru did very well this time. So I was like, oh, no. Uh, but I had one goal in mind here. I know the RCZ is so good on the brake. So I went for a bit of a dive here down the inside. Remember, you can do clean dives as long as you hit that apex just like so. Perfectly clean move. I was easily alongside before we got to that apex. Easily uh, done and a clean move. Now, we've got proper in the distance here. Oh, it's Subaru again. I caught up to the pack. The wind have been trading fast slaps, as I said earlier on. So we're going to head in towards the braking zone. Now, I hit the brakes and they don't seem to... Uh, well, they brake later than me, but they don't slow... Well, they slow up more. I don't know. It seemed very weird, but proper actually outbroke themselves there. So we got the position. It was a very weird move. I wasn't expecting the move. Um, initially I thought it was my fault but I, now watching it back I can see they've just gotten the dirty stuff as well so down the inside uh, proper's going to try and go here just goes a little bit too deep going to hit my car here and uh, yeah we're going to have to really bring that back so we continue on out the corner we're going to be side by side again you've seen the power of this Subaru then as it tries to accelerate away from me here so I tried to stay on the inside a little bit here got it slightly wrong but it's already proper so fortunately we both survived until proper ended up in the gravel trap so then proper didn't survive and up into P4 we go. So a podium again on the cards here. Can we do it? Can we get three for three? Well, Ghost up ahead has a half second penalty here. And the car is getting a bit sketchy now. So if you are in an MR car, the last couple of laps are sketchy. And as you've seen there, Ghost gets all sorts of drifty. Goes towards the right, ends up in the realms. And we get that P3 then. So just be careful of the tyres on the last few laps. But we're going to come in behind a BMW Z4. I never thought I'd say that in Gran Turismo. And an RCZ won there as well. That is going to be it for this week's races. I say be careful with MRs in that race C. I think the WRX is probably the better car to go for in the grand scheme of it. So maybe give that a shout and have a look at it. I say that is it for this week. Do give it a like on the way out, folks. Subscribe to the channel if you want to stay in touch with all sorts of Gran Turismo content. There's two videos there for you, including the recent one, why I'm not streaming that much and why I'm not in the Manufacturer Series that much. But I'm going to say bye once again. Thank you so much. Au revoir, farewell, and have a good week of racing.